Welcome back to American RVer. I'm Jim Gritch, and uh, sometimes we have issues with our motor homes, as you know, and we're going down the road. And sometimes on American RVer, we take those issues and create solutions for you because we know a lot of people have the same issues and problems. And uh, we had a little problem with our satellite dish. Uh, we have a Motosat satellite system, and the controller uh, is having a problem seeing on our particular uh, unit, we have DISH Network, is having a problem seeing the satellites. So, um, this is something that happened over the course of time because uh, DISH Network has changed the, the locator beacons on their satellites and things like that. So our SD2 controller now will no longer lock onto 110, 119, and 129, which are the three primary satellites. So, um, we started looking around for a solution, and the solution we came up with is RF Mogul. RF Mogul, um, some of the principals from that company, used to work at Motosat, and what they've done is designed a controller that will actually control your Motosat dish, and um, it's a, a great controller because it has additional features that the Motosat dish uh, controller has never had, and uh, we want to take you through that process of how to change that out. If you're having trouble with your Motosat dish, if it's a good dish, if there's nothing wrong with the dish, this will give you the opportunity to change out just the controller, keep your dish, and it also gives you um, the opportunity later on down the road, if something happens to your Motosat dish, you can then get an RF Mogul dish. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to show you how to change it out, how it all comes together, and I think it'll be very interesting for you, so stay with us. So the RF Mogul Eagle RE1 controller kit that is used for the Motosat mount um, is a little bit different than what you would get if you bought a complete unit from RF Mogul. Of course, what you see here is you've got the manual, and the manual is a very comprehensive, well-written manual. You've got the controller itself uh, right here, which is an Eagle controller. And uh, then you've got the 12-pin connector. That connector is used on the back of the Eagle controller. You have to rewire your current wiring harness into this and then plug it into the back of the unit for your control of your Motosat dish. You've got a barrel connector. The barrel connector is used in just in case you have a GPS, external GPS unit up on your roof uh, near the base of your Motosat HD um, unit. And this is for your blue light. This is a blue light connector. It's an adapter. You have to put this in line. Um, and I, I would believe that it cuts down the power somewhat from this Eagle controller to your blue light that's currently up on your Motosat unit. This interesting looking uh, piece here is actually a GPS. And uh, that's one of the differences. This unit does use a GPS to control um, where you're at, and so it helps the satellite tune into the uh, the satellite uh, dish tune into the satellites a little bit quicker. This unit, of course, is your power supply. A little different than the power supply that you currently have with your uh, Nomad or SD2 controller. Uh, this is a powered unit that powers up the controller itself. Now, this GPS actually does not have to go up on the roof if you have. Uh, roof that is either fiberglass or maybe rubber coated. As long as it's not a steel roof, you can use this inside the coach and put it above your equipment and it will use the, um, the GPS uh, locations right through the roof. So that's a real plus. Um, if you want to put it up on the roof, you can do that, that as well. So there you have it. That's what comes in with the kit. And uh, now we're going to show you how to put this all together so you can control your uh, current Motosat mount. All right, now you probably will notice that we're up on the motorhome roof right now. Uh, this is our Motosat dish right here. And there are two things you need to do, need to check with your current Motosat dish. Um, the first one is we're going to go down here. And I'm going to unscrew the screws on this particular junction box here. And this junction box, you'll notice where all the wires come through for your particular unit. And um, you could have up to four cables coming through here, going down into your coach. Now, in this particular unit, sometimes there is a GPS built in right here. If there is a GPS on your unit, you have to remove it, use that barrel connector I showed you at the beginning of the show, and just 
bypass it and connect straight across very similar to the way ours are currently now we do not have a gps unit on our particular uh, satellite system so we're good to go there we don't have to do anything with that the other thing you have to do is you've got to measure your focal length for your dish itself so in order to do that you have to take a, a ruler hook it to the top part of the dish itself and measure it um, to where your L and B's are hooked up and in our case since we have the dish high definition it should be about 26 and 3 8 inches right there and you have a quarter of an inch tolerance either way and so we're pretty much uh, very close to that about a quarter of an inch off so we're going to leave that if you do not have that particular tolerance what you've got to do is you've got to actually bend the dish you can pull your l and b's up grab the dish at the bottom here and you're going to actually bend it up so that it will actually make the distance shorter or if you push it down, it'll make the distance longer. So that's how you adjust that focal length. So once you get those two things done up at the top, you are ready to install the actual controller down at the bottom. We're now off the roof, of course, and we're inside the coach. And uh, one thing I neglected to mention when I was up on the roof, you should check the focal point of the dish, but you should also look at your um, connectors and your wires because you want to make sure that none of your wires are cracked and water can seep in and things like that the wires that are coming into the coach that's kind of critical too and since you're doing this installing this new controller you might as well go ahead and switch out the cables or at least uh, tape them up and make sure that they're waterproof while you're up there so that being said now we're down here um, this is my audio video area of the coach and We've got the old Motosat controller here, which we're going to take out. Um, one of the things I did do already is I ran the power supply. So this is the wire for the power supply. And uh, my wires are really tight in here, so it's pretty tough to get these things through. So my next quest is to run the GPS. Now, what I'm going to do in this, uh, this is a Monaco Camelot. And on the top part of this audio video cabinet, there are screws, two screws, and there's a panel there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the panel out and I'm going to mount this GPS unit above the wooden panel. So that way it can be a little bit closer to the ceiling and to the roof. And hopefully that'll get a better signal that way. We're going to try that. Hopefully I won't have to mount it on the roof, but we're going to give that a shot. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. Of course, um, we're going to take the Motosat um, Nomad controller. This happens to be an SD2 controller. We're going to pull the cables in the back off. I've got to take the coax uh, lines off of it because all of these things will go into the new controller. And this is the particular cable that I'm going to be changing out to that 12 pin uh, uh, connection cable and uh, rewiring it. So one of the things you've got to keep in mind is there are multicolored wires here. If you have a problem with colors, if you can't see colors well, you probably need to get someone else in the coach to help you with the color uh, schematic here so that you could put the right colors in the right numbers for the new connector okay that's kind of critical of course and you want to make sure you double check everything before you turn it on so the next thing I'm going to do is the GPS and then I'll show you how we're going to do some of this wiring now I've just run the uh, GPS puck put it on top of this panel up here um, and I pulled down my little panel and and actually I mounted it with some two-sided tape so it won't move around and I'm hoping that that will look directly through the fiberglass roof so that it'll get a good signal. Now that's all been routed down here. I've got the wire for the GPS right here. I've got the power supply wire right here and this is the wire that originally was attached to the Motosat SD2 controller. The other thing I did is I took off the two coax cables one that goes up to the mount which is the dish and the other one that goes to the dish receiver as i said before i have a dish not direct tv so that's why i'm referring to um, dish network and uh, it's basically the same type of setup for direct tv um, but you do have to install different uh, software programming into the controller when you set up your direct tv all right, this is the original connector for the uh, Motosat uh, SD2 controller. I've got a small screwdriver that's going to be able to fit into the screw holes of the connector so I can get these wires out. 
I've got my new connector that was supplied by RF Mogul so that uh, I could hook these uh, wires, color-coded wires, into the different inputs. Now, the other thing I want you to notice is that there is a wiring diagram here that's very comprehensive. Um, and if you just follow it to a T, there is 12 uh, different inputs for that connector. So you want to look at the colors. It has a color chart. It actually has a uh, color coding here. And so it's pretty easy actually to put it together. The only thing that you've got to be careful about is this blue light adapter. If you have a blue light on your uh, Motosat dish, there is a little part that we have to put in. And you saw that earlier. And it's just a little red wire. And that has to be spliced in to the power that's going up to that light. So I, I'm assuming it's some kind of a resistor or something in here. So. Uh, I'm going to start wiring this in, and then uh, we'll come back when I get this all wired in, and then uh, we'll put the rest of the unit in and see how it, how it functions. Well, I've wired in the new connector, and you can see that I took my time, looked at the schematic, make sure all the wires are in the correct position, and then I did put in this, the blue light connector, uh, that special wire that came with it, and scotch guarded that in. So uh, we should be ready to go now. Um, everything is all tied in. So we've got the controller. And uh, like I said earlier, I ran the wire for the power. And of course, I did have to run the wire for the GPS. So now we're gonna connect everything together here and uh, see what happens. Um, we've got all that together. And the next thing we've gotta do, um, you've got a light on here that says that there's power. And I took the, uh, the opportunity earlier to get on my computer, go to the RF Mogul, that's a website, it's www.rfmogul.com, and um, I got the software for, like I say in my case, um, Dish Network, and I put it on a flash drive, and in the instructions it'll tell you to do that, because the first time you turn it on, you want to make sure you put in this flash drive into the USB connector right on the front of the unit, and then turn the power on, and as soon as you turn the power on, it will load the specifications in there for, in my case, Dish Network. And so then the controller would be set up automatically for that. So now we're gonna turn the power on, and we get our boot, we get our loading, it says. So it's loading the information that's on that uh, flash drive. It's 30, 40, 50%. This is kind of a great way. You don't have to go in and set up anything. It actually is set up with the software that you get off of the RF Mogul um, website. So it's done. And the next thing I could do is just hit the search button. And so if I hit the search button, it should now bring the dish up and search for the Dish Network satellites. And that's what we're going to do. And it's saying, first, it's testing the dish. It's raising the elevation. It's going to go through a testing procedure. Obviously, this is the first time this unit has controlled the dish. So we're going to let it go through its tests. And we're going to see how it functions. And the nice thing, too, about this Eagle RE1 controller from RF Mogul is the fact that you have a readout here. One of the other things I will mention is that um, with the SD2 controller from Motosat, you could never do things manually with it. In other words, you cannot raise the dish manually. You cannot move it side to side to kind of tweak it and peak it. Well, this particular unit, you can actually go into a manual mode. So you can uh, move the dish, go left, right, wherever you have to do, get the elevation, get the skew. So that's a great feature, I think, on this particular unit. So um, if you do want to try to tweak it up a little bit, which you shouldn't have to, um, but if you, if you desire to do that, you can do it with this particular controller. All right, well, the Eagle controller locked in, took five minutes and 28 seconds. Typically, from what I'm understanding, it takes usually about three minutes, three minutes and 10 seconds to lock into the signal. But of course, this was the first time, had to go through all the calculations and things like that. I've got a very strong signal here. It's about 70% um, on all three of the birds, so, um, I think we're good to go. This is great. And uh, I, I got so tired of wondering if the other controller 
was going to lock on that uh, this is a treat to have it working first time every time. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I could answer some of your questions for you if you're considering uh, going for a, uh, an Eagle controller from RF Mogul. Um, of course, you can get more information if you go to the website, www.rfmogul.com, uh, or you can call them as well. Um, and there's a bunch of information there. So uh, maybe something you want to do. The, the controller goes for a retail price of $895, which of course is far less than getting a whole new system. If your Motosat dish is in good shape like mine was, um, then it's probably worth doing that. And the, the nice thing about this is that once your dish fails up there, you can then just get an RF mogul dish and replace your Motosat dish and you've got a complete new system again. So something to keep in mind, and I, I know a lot of people have converted over. Um, I particularly thought this was the best way to go about getting our satellite signal back again. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the show this month, and we'll see you next time right here on American RVer.